Why were you always so fucking fragmented? I watched your face freeze into numbness when the feelings became too much. When my anger sent you into the abyss, you would explode in my hands the way glass does when it goes from hot to cold too fast. Slivers of your soul banished like Voldemort's horcruxes. The parts of you that were your father's pain and violence compressed into the hollow tip of a bird's feather. That memory you hold of the first time you felt unloved, tucked in the thumb of a worn leather glove. The sound of your mother's shrieks of rage and sobs of despair rumbling in the curves of a nautilus. All those hidden bits that I'll never see because you were convinced no one person could handle it all, not even yourself. I would tell you that I didn't want you any other way but all at once, but you never believed me. Hoarding little pieces of yourself away until all that was left were the parts that I hated and the parts you could stand to lose. So the last time I saw my grandmother in about, uh, I think it was like 1999, it wasn't the best experience. She, should, she said some things that were hurtful and I was angry at her. And then a couple days later, I found out that she had passed. Um, and in some ways, it was a relief because I had this feeling that um, from the other side, we could under understand each other in a way that we hadn't before. Um, and I've had this feeling about about my ancestors, that um, there's limitations of the flesh and the context of where we are now um, that makes things hard, but that is different um, when you um, interact with them from the other side. And I'm really thankful for that. Um, and I think that's something that is possible um, for everyone. So this next piece is dedicated to my grandmother, Margarita. Um, it uh, has her name in it, at the very least. Doña Margarita sits in the town square, kitty corner to the Dama de Noche, across from the butcher, below the brothel, beneath the eyes of God, and cries for all of the things, for the loss of her sons, for the loss of her husband, for the loss of her mother, for the loss of her forebears, for the losses of her species. Pay her a few coins and she'll cry for you too. Place her crooked palms and two rough, palm, two rough palms over the tender skin of your hairless chest. Pull despair from your heart. Clutch you close like she's the Madonna and you are her son. Until tears flow from both your eyes and sobs rack your rib cage, and the Dama de Noche weeps perfume, and the butcher cries as he slits a chicken's throat, and the whores cry as they ride sobbing men, and the cobblestones seep with tears, and the earth shakes from the rending, and the town gasps deep from the cleansing, ready to store suffering in her armory until Doña Margarita cries again. This next piece is dedicated to my brother and myself and all the other broken beings that this world calls crazy. Inocente, his mother named him. Sweet breath boy, cinnamon skin, smelling of milk and balmy breeze. Inocente, summoned to earth by the grandmothers and grandfathers to be a priest king, to bring the rain of split vision to stand with feet, feet spread across worlds. Inocente, infant fists raised above his head in rage, knowing this age could not hold him, crying out day after day until his mother wailed with him. Inocente, tender toddler, angry and sad and sad and angry, holding the generations on his tiny shoulders holding hope for healing in each chubby finger. Inocente, delicate boy child, sensitive as a new wound, running from ancestors, running from ghost guides, 
fearing they were demons. Innocente, sweet-faced teen, always remembering the secrets that most adults forget, crying at being alive and raging for lack of elders. Innocente, too knowing for this world that has no space for visions, for the ghosts that crowd the air, for the dimensions perched one atop another, for all the beasts and beings with forgotten names. Innocente, brother of us all, may you be whole, may you be safe. Your healing in this lifetime will determine the fate of us all. So I believe we're all on a path to healing. I believe I'm on a path to healing. I believe that what we are is who came before us. And who came before us are our ancestors who stand at our shoulders. And we are here now together in this space and our ancestors stand at our shoulders in this space right now. So I invite you to think about the things that you want for yourself, the healing that you want for yourself as I read this last piece. Um, For years, I have avoided speaking too much on the issues of chronic illness and disease. I realize now that a lot of it has to do with shame, with the knowledge that if you knew how guilty I am in the destruction of my own body, you can't possibly have any sympathy for my situation. See, lupus may be my immune system attacking my kidneys, and diabetes may be my cells failing to use insulin correctly, but there's also the ways I have attacked my own body through inaction, neglect, and outright sabotage since birth. These practices are things that I learned from my family. These practices are things my family learned from legacies of colonization. These beliefs and practices possess our bodies the ghosts of the past making us sick. They are just a few amongst the many that afflict us. All us children of colonies sick in some way. Some of us more sick, the canaries in the coal mine, little birds trying to tell you that we're all dying in body, mind, and spirit. Some more quickly and painfully than others. Chronic diseases and the ways they limit our ability to live normal lives, slow our ability to carry out the plans for collective liberation we have constructed, slow our roles when all we wanted to do was go out, kick game, enjoy fucking and laughing and playing, the way they bring early deaths for some of us, are as much a symptom of colony as is our continuous destruction of the earth out of fear and a need to conquer as are the incarceration and murder of black and brown bodies by the state and its agents. None of these symptoms are comparable or the same, but certainly spring from the same sick system. We cannot abide by our own survival while others die. Yet we still live and others still die. Yes, we are all little birds singing of impending doom. But even amongst our flock, some of us die faster than others. Some of us pass quicker than we need to because we do not have the resources and care to slow our passing. If the greatest work that we can assign to ourselves at this moment is to survive, then please, please, let us survive side by side. I do not want any of our flock to die before we have honored our bodies and therefore the gen generations before us and therefore the gods that birthed us. We cannot abide by the survival of some of us while so many others die. Our purpose in life is not to survive alone, but to fly together in a great yellow swarm, our wings radiant 
against the hot embrace of the sun. Thank you.